What's up, everybody? My name is Elliot Cohen, and on today, I get the unique honor and privilege of being able to join you through our virtual worship service right where you are to declare what the Lord has placed into our hearts. But before we go any further with this service, I want to give a shout out to our, our leaders, our tremendous leaders, Dr. Marvin A. Jackson and Deborah Jackson. Would you do me a favor, even while you're in your home, would you put your hands together and give God the praise for them? We honor the Lord and we thank them because how can we hear without a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent by God? You know, my wife and I, we transitioned from the great state of Wisconsin here to Central Florida. And uh, as we made this, this transition, we recognized, even in the capacity of work and ministry that we were doing, that we needed to be surrounded. We needed to be inculcated. We needed to put ourselves in position to be able to hear, hear from someone that had the ability to speak to destiny and purpose in our life. And I want to let you know that when we came to the River of Life Christian Center, we found exactly that, a man and woman of God who speaks on a regular basis the profound, unadulterated truth. My life and my wife's life has been made the better because of Dr. Marvin Jackson and Deborah Jackson. We praise God for them and for the work that they are doing now and the work that they continue to do. So we, are, we honor the Lord for our pastors, and thank you for giving me this opportunity today. I also want to thank God for my lovely wife, uh, Pastor Josette. Listen, I've been married to her. We will be celebrating 32 years in marriage, and we've been through the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, but I want to let you know that I love my wife. I appreciate her, and, and we've been experiencing uh, the greatness of God even in our, our marriages. We've learned how to trust God, trust one another, and, and really believe that our, our best days are not behind us. Our best and blessed days are yet ahead of us. So we thank God and honor the Lord for her as well. Listen, we have a, a, a word for you today that the Lord has spoken unto me. And in fact, got me up early uh, in the morning, uh, 2, uh, 2 o'clock a.m., and then also 3 o'clock a.m., and began to continue to speak in my heart about what he wanted his people, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture, to be able to hear. And so I thank you again for tuning in. We're going to, going to pray, and then we're going to get into the Word of God. Father, we thank you for this tremendous opportunity that we have to be sharing with your people. Those that have stopped by today, tuned into this broadcast, not by accident or coincidence. Nothing just happens. Lord, they, they've tuned in on today, and they are affixed to be able to hear something that is going to catapult them to another level. And we praise you and thank you, Lord, that you will speak through me, that you will use these lips of clay to be able to declare the unsearchable riches of Christ. We honor you and bless you, and we thank you that we're standing in this place. It's by the grace of God that we've been kept all of this time, and we have a mind to go on. So we honor you and thank you and give you the glory and honor for this word today and the success thereof and the hearers that hear this word in Jesus' name. Would you do me a favor? Would you clap your hands for the Lord? You know, let me tell you why we're clapping our hands, because we're thanking God in advance of what he is about to do. Yeah, yeah. Before we even get into the meat of the word of God, I believe that we can can speak and declare even before the end of a matter what's going to happen in, begin, in the beginning. So we are declaring the end from the beginning that God is about to deliver, speak, a, a word that transcends us and will transform us and will bring us to that place of elevation that he desires for you and I to be. I trust that you have your Bibles. I trust that you have some kind of device that you can get in tune, that you can make this connection uh, with this man of God here on today, because I'm excited to hear what the Spirit of the Lord will say unto us. I want to invite your attention to the, the New Testament book of St. John, the second chapter, and we're going to be reading verses 1 through 11. And if you have St. John, the, the second chapter, beginning at verse 1, 1 through 11, verse 1 reads, and the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Isn't that something? 
And when they wanted wine, because the wine had run out, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. Verse 4 said, says, Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Verse 7 says, Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water. That's in the red ink, by the way, my brother and my sister. That lets you know these are the words of Jesus. And they filled them up. How did they fill them? Or what did they do? They filled them up to the brim. Verse 8 says, and he said unto them, draw out now. And bear to the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water, that was, wait a minute. <clears throat> I, I got I to pause here for just, just a second. I thought all they had was, was water. W w when did this thing switch all of a sudden? Now it says here, now when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth, come on, say that with me, good wine. And, and when the men have well drunk, they then that which is worse, okay? But thou hast kept the good stuff for now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. And all that agreed with that reading of the word of the Lord said, amen and amen. I would like to use for subject as we begin to, to look at this text for today, I would like to use as a subject, and here it is. God's strategy for a breakthrough. God's strategy. Now, no, notice what I didn't say. I didn't say your or my strategy. I said the God's strategy for a breakthrough. Who in the world, come on here, let's be real, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, who does not want to receive the best that God has to offer? I don't know about you. I, I, I'm not interested in, in, in living in Lodabar. I'm not interested in just having, uh, ha having average when God says that I can have more than enough. I truly believe that if we want what God desires for you and I to have, we got to do exactly what he tells us to do. And more than money, more than fame, more than connections, more than, than your intellect, here's what I believe, that in the year 2021, God is about to give you and God is about to give me. He's going to give us a strategy for breakthrough. I, 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 see, see I, I, I don't know if you can shout on that right now, but, but see, if, if God gives you a strategy, he'll take you from not having enough to having more than enough. And I don't know about you, that's what I desire to have. I can give you a few examples of, of someone in the Bible, and we're going to get to our text here in, in just a moment here, but I'm warming up. I'm just giving you uh, some foundation. I'm giving you some, some context so that we understand exactly uh, where we're going through the text. There are, are people in the Bible. Let's look, at, let's look at an example of someone whom God had given a strategy for, for breakthrough. Do you remember when the children of Israel were coming uh, out of Egypt, a land of bondage, and about to go into their land of promise? And, and, and Moses has, has died off the scene. There is a new general that has replaced Moses called Joshua. And you remember how that, that the city of Jericho, the scripture says, that that city was straightly shut up. No one went in, no one went out. And, and this was the city that God had said in previous chapters that he was going to give to his people. Well, well, well God gives, uh, gives more than, than military might to Joshua, he gives him a strategy. He says, here's what you're going to do. This is tripped out, y'all. That makes no sense at all. All y'all going to do is just walk around the walls. 
You, you just go, you just go, don't, don't say nothing, don't, don't release nothing, don't do anything. I know it may not make any sense, just walk around. What is God giving Joshua to bring breakthrough in his life? He's giving him a divine strategy. And you know the rest as you look through the text, and I don't have time to continue on with that, but, but, but he gives him a divine strategy. You remember the widow woman who uh, is preparing for herself and her son. She's got, got little sticks together, getting ready to make a little meal here, and she's about, about to make the meal and die, and the, the, the prophet comes unto her, and he begins to speak unto her, and he gives her a, a, a strategy on what she needs to do, and part of what she needs to do to, to, to get her breakthrough. He says, fear not. He says, what I want you to do is make, here's the strategy, make a, make a little cake for, for, for me first, all right, and by you taking care of God's things first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything that you have need of will be added unto you by her following the divine strength. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, can, can I give you one more example? You remember, there's another a widow woman who says, comes to the prophet, and she says, my, my husband uh, has died, and I got all these creditors trying to take everything that I got away from me. She says, she says not only are they trying to take my stuff, they're trying to take my child. See, they're not only trying to take what she has in the present moment, they're trying to play hostage on her future. And nobody, nobody has any right to put any hold on your future. And I believe that God is about to bring strategies to, to, to cause breakthrough to happen in your life so that there is no holds barred on where you can go. No holds barred on what you can do. The devil's got a backup. He's got to take his hands off of the stuff that belongs to you. Because my Bible says if the thief be found, he's got to restore not only one fold, but sevenfold. But what does God do for this widow woman? He gives her a strategy. What does he tell her to do? I want you to go out and borrow several vessels. And what I want you to do is take those vessels and fill it with oil. And what I'm, I'm going to do for you in the midst of, of, of your circumstance is I'm going to put you in the oil business. Come on, somebody. He put her in a business so that, that, that her immediate situation is taken care of and that, that her future is not held hostage because God is in the business of giving you and I divine strategies for breakthrough. Well, well here in our text, what do we find? We find that, that Jesus, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the disciples are at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And can I stop for a moment here? I gotta, gotta add this here because, you know, I, I, I researched the text. I, I searched the scriptures to find out whether the things are so. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wanna understand uh, not only what is said, but why it's said. I, I, I looked through the scriptures to find out uh, certain places. Why? things happen in certain areas of the Bible because I think that that's important as well. Uh, who's, who's in the, the context of the story as well? Well, if you understand anything about Cana of Galilee, it wasn't like, like, like L.A., you know, where a lot of people knew uh, about, about L.A. It wasn't, it wasn't like, like, like New York City, a place with a lot of lights and a lot of glamour and a lot of glitter. No, 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 no. Cana of Galilee was a small place. Come on. Cana of Galilee was, a, was an insignificant place. It was so insignificant that not many people knew about that place. Jesus travels from the previous day from Nazareth as he's picking up along the way several, uh, uh, several men who will then become disciples. Yeah, along the way he gets Simon, uh, Andrew. Along the way he, from Nazareth moving along to Cana, he gets uh, not only Andrew, he gets Simon. And not only along the way does he get, get Andrew and Simon, uh, he gets he gets uh, uh, Philip, and not only along the way does he get Philip and converts them and, and, and is leading them uh, to a greater destiny, he gets Nathaniel. And if you remember in the scripture that, that when, the, when uh, Philip begins to tell him about, hey, this Jesus who, whom I have seen, uh, this Messiah whom I have seen, do you remember what the words were that, that were uttered back to him about the man that, that he had seen? No, no. Do you, you, remember, you remember? It's found in, in, 
in uh, St. John, the first chapter and verse 45. Let me read that for you. And I know this is, was not in the notes here, but it says, Philip findeth Nathanael and said to him, what does he say? He said, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth. I'm going somewhere, y'all. Hang on with me. Uh, the son of Joseph. And here's the reply, the reply of, 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 of the reply of Nathanael. And Nathanael said unto him, can any good thing come out of this little place? Can, can, can anything happen? Oh, wait, wait, you can't be telling me that, that the Messiah, this, this true man of God, is coming out of a little place. No, no, no. They go from Nazareth over to Cana, which, which is not a glamorous place. Now, now, follow with me for just a moment. In John, in the, in the book of John, St. John, Jesus will perform seven miracles that we're told of, all right? But his first miracle, he does in Cana of Galilee. Elliot, why is that significant? Because the first thing that he did wasn't in a great place. Come on now. The first miracle that Jesus did was in a place that nobody knew about. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. What am I, what am I about to tell you? See, he, he's about to bring a notoriety to, to a place uh, that not many people know about. No, no, he's about to take a, a, a place where, where no one is talking about uh, to a place where everybody is talking about. And that's what I want to let you, you know about today. God is in the business from taking people uh, from obscurity where nobody knows your name, nobody knows about your business, nobody knows about your ministry, nobody, know, nobody knows about your call, nobody knows about what you're doing, and, and God is in the business of taking people from, from, from obscurity to notoriety. See, he had to keep you hidden for a period of time while you work the kinks out. But when God, hallelujah, shows up, he shows up with power. He shows up with glory, and he shows up performing his best stuff. So it is, it is critical that we begin to see that he performs this very first miracle in a small place. So the disciples are there. We, we have to, we have to, re, we have to uh, uh, analyze in our thoughts here that, that there may have been more than four disciples that were at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. But we at least, come on with me now, you're, you're Bible scholars, we at least know that there were four. Uh, Andrew, Simon, Philip, and Nathaniel. There may have been more at the wedding. We also know that, that Jesus was invited. Come on, somebody. Not only was Jesus invited to the wedding, the, the, Jesus' mother was invited to the wedding. Now, now this is tripped out. What happens at this wedding? The weddings in, in back in Jesus' day were not like the weddings that happen in modern day. What do you mean, uh, Elliot? I, I mean, most weddings that you know of that, that happen in modern days and times don't last uh, five days. Most weddings that you and I know of today, because if they did, uh, there'd be a big problem with that. Most marriages, uh, most weddings, ceremonies that you and I know of, pretty much on, on occasion, you know, last, last a day or half a day. But back in Jesus' day, the weddings lasted, they could, could last up to, to weeks. And see, in making preparation for a, a wedding ceremony that was going to last several weeks, you, you needed to make sure that you had all your ducks in a row, that, that you had enough supply so you don't run out. Come on, baby. So that you don't, you don't put yourself in position of, of being embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. So, so what happens in this, this fest, this marriage fest, is that, that they had not fully kicked in to the celebration yet. No, they had not, if you're driving, I'm liking it to driving a stick shift. You know, they, they hadn't even taken that bad boy out of, out of first gear yet, and they run out of the stuff that was a part of the celebration. Well, well, my question to you today, my, the question that I have for you is that, is, is simply this, what do you do when you run out. How do you respond when, when, when you run out? When, when your marriage, 
runs out a little bit, what do you do? When your finances run out a little bit, what do you do? When, when you are having situations in your health, you were in the best of health and condition, but now things are running out, what do you do? When you had all kinds of friends in the world until you decided, uh, like our Pastor Jackson has been teaching us about the importance of focus, and you decided that, that you had to take some people out of your favorite five. Now you don't have as many people uh, in your, your Rolodex because you realize that, that, that there were more people that were, were parasites trying to take away from you than add to your life. But what do you do when you run out? See, this is what happens in the, in the text here. They're at a wedding ceremony and they run out of the stuff that's a part of the celebration. Well, can I tell you that, that, that this, for many of you, may not be the issue? Oh, I, I, I wish you'd do a close-up of this. Because if you don't get anything else out of the message that I'm sharing with you today, see, your issue may not be running out. Your issue is who do you turn to when you run out? See, when, when they ran out, the mother of Jesus turns to Jesus. Ain't that a trip? Isn't that a trip? Hold on a second. There were a lot of people in the wedding ceremony other than Jesus. What do you mean? The bride was there. The groom was there. The disciples were there. The guests were there. A lot of folk that showed up. But even though there were a lot of people that showed up, I, I like what the writer of the song says, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord can do you. So she recognized the mother of Jesus. She didn't go to the disciples. She didn't go to the groom. She didn't go to the bride. She didn't go to the guests that were there. Immediately, in a point of need, she recognized where her focus was. And she said to Jesus, they have run out. He turns over to her and says, woman, what have I to do with thee? My time has not yet come. I know that you are part of, 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 of this birthing from the father, uh, uh, father coming down, using your womb to bring me into the earth. But I want to let you know that, that this is no power trip here. You cannot, cannot tie me down to the natural. No, you can't tie me down to the fact that, that you and I are, are, are connected uh, biologically. No, this has nothing to do with flesh and blood because flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God and flesh and blood will not bring breakthrough to your life when you need a strategy to get out of what, you get, what you're in. No, you need something higher than that. And Jesus says to her, I, 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 I can't do it before my time. I can't move before my time. I, 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 I can't, can't take care of this need before my time. You know what Mary does? She doesn't get mad. She doesn't get upset. She doesn't fold her arms. She doesn't get her stuff and leave the church. She, she, she doesn't move to another city. You know what she does? She said, I heard what you said, but I believe in my heart that we're not going to sit around here and not have all of our needs met. She said, no, I know exactly what you're saying. It may not be your time, but, but I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to be in position of standby until something changes. You know, the Bible says you got to wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. See, see, if it had not been for the Lord, which was on our side, we would have lost our mind. Sometimes you got to just hold the position until God brings the breakthrough. Sometimes you got to stand still, flat-footed right there, until you see the salvation of the Lord. No, she doesn't back up. She goes to the disciples and she says to them, she says, this is what I want you to do. I want you to stay right here and do whatever he tells you to do. Listen, 
My first point as I'm beginning to, to move further uh, in this message, the first point, if you're going to see breakthrough happen in your life by utilizing God's strategies, what you have to do is you got to use what you got. That's part of the, the strategy. You got to use what you got. Jesus, in reply to Mary, says, it's not my time. But even though he says it's not my time, she says to the servants, whatever he says, do, do it. We then find Jesus turning around and giving a command to the disciples. I thought he just said, it's not my time. Somebody placed a demand on him that caused him to turn around and do something that, that he wasn't about to do. Oh yeah, somebody held onto the horns of the altar and began to pray and to seek him and to not give up until change happened in their life. And just this is what Jesus said. He says, guys, servants, Use what you have. There are these six water pots right in front of the house. Six. And what I want you to do is I want you to go and fill them to the brim. Ladies and gentlemen, this, brothers and sisters, this, not, this does not make any sense. These water pots, these six water pots that were outside of the house, they weren't used uh, for, for, for turning water into wine. No, you got to use what you have. He says, these water pots that have traditionally been used for ceremonial cleansing, for people to wash their hands as they've been, been traveling for long distances, as many of the Jews would do, they would wash their hands, they would, they would cleanse their feet before they come into the house. The, these things that have, have been used traditionally for another purpose, God says, I'm about to use something that's unconventional, something that's untraditional, something that has never been done before. Don't throw that away because part of God's divine strategy is to cause you to use exactly well, uh, use the stuff that you have not been using. To, you, you've got to make sure that you use what you have. See, these water pots have been there all along, but God is not going to bring something different to bring their breakthrough in their lives. He's going to use what they already have. They were ordinary water pots, but he said, those ordinary water pots, I'm about to do something extraordinary with them. You see, when you run out, that's not the, that, that's not the worst thing that can happen to you in a world in the world why because sometimes when you when you run short sometimes when you run out you, you begin to realize what you have that you have not been using see you never truly know what you have until you run out so he uses the water pots he says to them the, to, to the service three things that I need for you to do one I need for you I need for you to Fill these water pots to the brim. Two, he says, I need for you to draw out. And three, he says, I need you to take it to the governor. But I want you to see from the text in the words that Jesus gives by way of instructions to the servants, he says, I need you to fill, comma. I need you to draw, comma. And I need you to bear, comma. See, in following God's divine strategy for breakthrough, not only do you have to use what you got, but you have to do exactly what he tells you to do. Some of you have not received your manifested breakthrough in your life because you put a period where God has placed a comma. He says, fill, comma, draw, comma, bear, comma. At any point that they would just do half of what he asked for them to do, 
they would not get the full manifestation. And some of you are not, not reaping the full manifestation of what God has promised to you, not because he's not made the promise, not because he's holding something back from you, but because you're not doing the full orb of what he's called you to do. You've stopped at a period when he wants you to continue on. Phil, don't just, and notice what he said. He said, I don't want you just, just to put a little, little water inside of, of, of the, the stones, the jars that are there. What I want you to do, I want you to fill it. Don't, don't stop until you fill it. Now you got to realize here, and I'm running on, that these disciples, when they, when they fill these, these water pots, that, that each water pot held somewhere between 30, 20 to 30 gallons of water. That's a lot of water, right? But, but they would have to get water, go back over to the water pot. I thought they ran out of wine. Why in the world are we going and putting water in the water pot when what we really need is wine? But he's not going to give you what you need until you do what he tells you to do. No, no. Some of you are praying for God to supply a need, but you are not doing what he says for you to do. He says, I want you to fill it. Fill it till it's overflow. The next thing that I want you to do, he says, I want you to draw it out. They're drawing water out. But when they draw the water out from the bottom, he says, you're not done. Not only do they have to, to use what they have and, and do exactly what he tells them to do, he says, he says, I want you to take it, my God, and I want you to bear it. You notice what Jesus does or what he does not do? See, he already knows how things are going to end up. He already knows what 2020, 2021 is going to be like for you and I. He already knows what's down the road for you and I. And he says, though your beginnings are small, your latter end may greatly increase. Some of you may have been in a position where you have run out, but that's not going to be the end of your story. No, you're not going to live a life where you've run out. You're about to experience exceedingly, abundantly, above all that he could ask or think. You're about to experience his magnanimous power. How, how in the midst uh, of COVID numbers rising the way that they're number, rising, how in the midst of a global pandemic is he going to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus? Because God's stuff and God's timing is not like your stuff and our timing. God will, like he did for these, these people who had run out at the, at the wedding ceremony the marriage ceremony, he saved his best stuff for last. Oh my God. Goodbye, y'all. Here's what I want you to know, that, that, that in God's divine strategy, it is, it is a divine setup. It is a Holy Ghost setup. No, no, God wanted to see if you would still hold fast to his word when the money was funny and the change was strange. Would you hold fast to his word when, when people walked out on you and left you and said they would have nothing to do with you. Would you hold fast to his word? I have a promise for you. God is saving his best stuff for his final act. No, I, 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 I get a little upset with people who are in the midst of games and people who are in the midst of, of watching uh, movies where, where stuff doesn't look good in the beginning. But here's what I want to tell you. For those people who have walked out on your story they have not seen the second half that is about to be written. God has saved his best stuff for last. I gotta go, y'all. Here's what the, what the governor of the feast says to the bridegroom as the servants bring over here to him the water that was made wine. They drew it from the bottom of the barrel. They drew it from the bottom of the bucket. When they drew it, the water, it was still water in their hand. But because they were doing what God God told them to do somehow when they started to take steps from the outhouse to the inner house, from the outer court to the inner court, from the outer place to the holy of holies, they began to walk. When they walked in their hand with, with, the, with the water in their hand, somehow transformation happened. Somehow change happened. Somehow it went from water to wine, went from ordinary to extraordinary.
extraordinary, went from nothing to something. That thing that they had began to, to transform and change to bring about breakthrough that they needed to take care of everybody that was in the house. When they drew it and put it in the hand of the governor of the feast, he started scratching his head. He said, I don't understand this. He said, I've been to a lot of parties. I've been to a lot of marriage ceremonies. I've been to a lot of places, and I know what the strategy is. The strategy is to bring out the best stuff first. That's so that when, when after people have gotten their best taste out, then you bring out the bad stuff. But he said, you got a different strategy. You have saved your best stuff for last. Yeah, he saved his best stuff for last because he was about to show exactly who he was. No, their need at the wedding, at the marriage of Cana of Galilee was more than Jesus supplying a need for their lives. No, it was about Jesus revealing and manifesting his glory so that the disciples could believe on him. What were they going to do? They were going to believe that he was more than enough. They were going to believe that he was a conqueror. They were going to believe that, that he was, was the one who is and the one who's to come. They were going to believe that he was a wonderful counselor. You see, because let me just break it down as I close here in this message because you got to know who you're dealing with. You got to know that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. What is it about this Jesus that gives you hope? What is it about this Jesus that gives you strength? What is it about this Jesus that lets you know that breakthrough is coming into your life? Because he is able to transform himself into whatever you need. In chemistry, he turned the water into wine. In biology, he was born without normal conception. In physics, he defied the laws of gravity. In economics, he disproved disproved the law of diminishing returns by feeding 5,000 with two fish and five five loaves. In medicine, he cured the sick. In history, he is the beginning and the end. In the government, he's called the wonderful counselor and the prince of peace. In religion, he said, I am the one who comes to you and no one else comes to the Father but through me. He is the greatest man throughout all of history. And he has designed for you, designed for me, to receive his very best. And a part of his very best is you having his strategy to bring breakthrough, to bring increase, to bring abundance, to bring overflow to your life. Running out is not the worst thing that could ever happen to you, my brother, my sister. Sometimes running out is a part of the process that helps you get in alignment, helps you reshuffle the deck, helps you to chart the right course. And that's what he wants you to do. Those of you that are listening to me right now, we've changed the calendar year, but you're still sitting in the same place that you've been in. And if you want exactly what God has, got to do it the way that he tells you to do it. He has a strategy for breakthrough in your life. And he's going to allow you to, those hands, he's going to allow you to use what you got. Those eyes, he's going to allow you to use what you got. That wisdom, he's going to allow you to use what you got. But you got to use it. You got to do what he says got to believe in who he is. And if you do that, the ROI, the return on your investment, will be greater than you could ever have even imagined. Every head bow and every eye closed. While you're listening to this broadcast, wherever you are, 
I know that it's not by accident or coincidence that you have tuned in. I know what the Lord told me. He woke me up two, several times, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, and began to share with me <clears throat> that there would be someone positioned in the right place, positioned, tuning into this broadcast right now. You're, you're not saved. You don't know the Lord. You want change in your life. But see, someone once said that insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, expecting different results. See, you've tried your way. What about turning to Jesus? What about doing like, like the mother of Jesus Mary did, and she turned and said, they'd run out with open hands and open arms. And you'll find out that, that he, see, for him to do for you what he wants to do, he's got to be present. See, that miracle happened because Jesus was there. Some of you are wanting change without him being there. But the, the scripture says that, that the word is nigh unto you in your heart and in your mouth. And if you call on the name of the Lord, Romans 10, 13, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, shall be saved. I want to lead you in a word of prayer. And if you are believing that God will, will, will transform, change your life, this is the breakthrough that you need, I want you to pray with me. Say, say dear Lord, yeah, say it right now. I come to you now in the name of Jesus Christ, your precious son who gave his life for me. I realize that I'm lost without you, that I can do nothing without you, that I've come to the end of my rope. I, I stopped fight, fighting. I stopped trying to figure out what I need to do, and I'm willing to turn to you. I confess you with my mouth. I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead just for me. And your word tells me that if I call on you, that you will answer me and show me great and mighty things that I know not. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my personal Savior. Beloved, if you have just done that, we want to welcome you into the family of God. We thank God for you making that change making that declaration, and it happens just like that. Here at the River of Life Christian Center, we are excited about your new conversion. And there's, in just a moment, I'm going to give you information on our, our website where you can go and where you can let us know of your change, your commitment that you have made in following the steps of the Lord. We want to hear about it. We want to celebrate you. And if you're in need of a church home as well, not that this is a mandate for you to do it, but we open ourselves up and say that we would love to be able to be the place where you continue to follow in the footsteps of the Lord. Yes, going to the right church makes the right difference in your life. Yeah, yeah, you can have good seeds, but if the seeds are not planted in good ground, that those seeds will not flourish and blossom and grow the way that they need to. So being in a good church is crucial. It is absolutely critical for your, your growth and development in him. I thank God for you tuning in to the broadcast on today. And, and before we go, there is something that I want you and I to do, something that I'm glad to do as well. We are givers here at the River of Life Christian Center, and we understand that, that uh, God is able to make all grace abound to us, that we have having all sufficiency might be able to bow, abound in every good work. You know, in Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter, I was reading that the other day, and it says that, that but you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you the power. That word power, literally, uh, in the Hebrew text, it means ability. It means the strength. It means the wherewithal. It means the, 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 the get up and go. 
God gives us exactly what we need, the ability to be able to notice this. He says, so that we can carry out his covenant, so that we can fulfill his covenant. Yeah, yeah. Doing things like this, getting the word out, there's expenses to do that. But God will, will give you the wherewithal, the resources. He, he will give more to you, seed to the sower, bread to the eater, so that, that his house can be a house that is full and a house meeting the needs of the people. So I want to invite you right now to, to plant a seed into this ministry. Those of you, whether you're giving your tithes, your offerings, uh, your pastoral gifts. There are four convenient ways that you can continue to support the ministry here at RLCC. You can stop by our website at RLCCT.TV, click the, the Give tab, scroll down, and select one of the giving platforms, or you can donate via our church app. In fact, why don't you text RLCC to one 888 364 give that's 1-888-364-4483 and you know what maybe in the memo line put this breakthrough yeah yeah that's a, that's a, that's a, that's exactly what he's about to do for you uh, and I remember we appreciate you tuning into this broadcast uh, on today this virtual broadcast we'd love to have you here uh, at the River of Life Christian Center. Make sure that you go online, you register um, as well. We want to, in the words of our Pastor Deborah, to have a prepared place ready for a prepared people. And remember also that the Lord has a word that's just for you. And where can you find it? You can find it right here at the River of Life. God love you. God bless you. We'll see you going higher and higher in him. Break it through.